It is a beautiful day here in Johnson City, Tennessee, one of the best places on the planet. And I just heard a little music being played by this guy <laughs> that you're getting ready to meet, and it was phenomenal. And so I'm excited to introduce you guys to Aaron Jackson. He is a musician, he's a adjunct professor in the past with ETSU, mm -hmm. and he's just a, a Johnson City fan. So welcome to the <laughs> Johnson it. City Living Podcast. Thank you for having me, Colin. Honored to be here. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. So yeah. Johnson City Living, yeah. I don't know if you've listened to the podcast, but the first question you get is, what do you love most about Johnson City? So I, I was talking to my wife about it last night when I found out I was going to be on a podcast, and I it it's it's hard to narrow it down, but I'll I'll do my best here. What I think I like about it the most is this place has a lot of culture. Mm. It has a lot of great culture, and you know I'm a musician. I've lived here for 22 years. I've played a lot of different kinds of music. There's a lot of music around here, a lot of art, a lot of culture, a lot of different kinds of music. Yeah. Um. But you get all of that with a very small town feel mm -hmm. and like good small town right yeah good small town so it's it's friendly and it just feels like home so you get all of the good all of the good culture with the small town feel and also to the mountains i wasn't born and raised here i'm actually from east texas which okay. i which i love east texas too uh but man i love the mountains and there's just something about um there's something about the mountains that really resonates with me yeah so i uh, I, I don't think after being here for 22 years that i could ever not live in the mountains right yeah they're just beautiful aren't they, they? they're really every are. day they're a little different yeah you can see them crystal clear some days some days are a little hazy exactly it's just a, yeah. it's just they're beautiful even dri there. driving over here i was coming up roan street and right that view right at science hill yeah Man, I, awesome. I first saw that 22 years ago, and that still takes my breath away. And my, it's just, another it's, one, another good one is coming down from Science Hill, like right by Open Doors. Like if you're yes. looking at that range that way too, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's just yeah, we're we're blessed. I love it all the time. I love it here. That's awesome. All right, so you grew up in East Texas. Uh -huh. How did you yeah. come to Johnson City? Yeah, so I had. Um, pretty much from the time I was born, um, uh, music was my thing. And much to my parents' chagrin, when I was a little kid, I'd drag the pots and pans out, and I'd get the wooden spoons, and I'd just go John just bond them on those things. <laughs> just John, just animal from Sesame Street. Oh, That's probably who I was really turning. There you just, go. I, I mean, love it. And so, and so <laughs> th there was that. And then whenever we'd go to church, I would stand up on the front pew, and I'd watch the musicians on there. So um, I just I'd been into music when I was a kid. I started taking guitar lessons when I was ten, and um, I uh, I just got into a lot of different kinds of music, a lot of different kinds of guitar. The blues of Stevie Ray Vaughan. Um, this was the mid '90s, so the Eagles were doing uh -huh. the Hell Freezes Over tour. So yeah. my parents, you know, had grown up jamming. Well, I was going to ask, are they yeah. are they musicians themselves? No, no, no. Uh -huh. and, and, and they're not even they're so my dad's a general contractor, okay. he's a construction guy. Yep. And um, and my mom, for the most part, when I was growing up, she was a stay at home mom, and uh, and and they they weren't even you know re really big music fans. But whenever the Eagles did that, they were like, boys, we're we going. need to watch this because they grew up listening to that. When oh, the man. Eagles were like the new, young, yeah. hip thing in yeah. the 70s. And then I was seeing it when it kind of came back around. So that I got into that. I got into Stevie Ray Vaughan. And then I eventually found my way into bluegrass music. Ricky Skaggs mm. had gone from doing country. To, he, put, he went from doing that to doing bluegrass again. And he put out an album called Bluegrass Rules. And the guy playing guitar on that is uh, his name is Brian Sutton, and he man he is the Michael Jordan of bluegrass guitar. Really? And I remember just listening to that, and I was like, I've got to figure out, I've got to figure out how to do that. So I really, really got into that, and I don't know what it was about it because I was 16, 17, you know, in the early 2000s. Yeah. So it's it's not like the rest of my peers. Where, you we're know, jamming out, jamming to, out the bluegrass at that time. Kind of looking at you, like, bro. Yeah, they were like, dude, what, what are, what are you doing? What yeah, are you doing? We're listening to Bell Bib DeVoe, you know. <laughs> you know uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, so I, I really got into that, and I learned. I eventually found out about the bluegrass program at ETSU, and I was able to get a little bit of a scholarship that waived the out-of-state tuition. And then we drove up here to just visit, just to see if we liked it. And I remember whenever we got here, just being in the mountains and Johnson City, and I was like, yeah, 
yeah, this is my. This feels good. This is my place. I mean, bless my mother's heart. That's a tough thing. That's a haul to have your to have your old way. It's it's a haul, but it's also I mean having having your your firstborn you know move sixteen that far hours away, away from right me, out of the yeah. nest. You know was was uh, was tough, but you know I've I've been here ever since, and um, so that's that's how I got here. That's cool. Yeah, that's really a cool story. I love that you. Uh, yeah, you felt like the Lord just made you to do music from the start. You know? I don't feel like I had a choice. Yeah. I really don't. Cool? Yeah. And, and it's, it sounds a little cheesy, but it's one of those things where it's like it, it really does seem like it picks you. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, really right out of the gate. I but was, then your parents, they didn't fight it. They could have said, no, we're not sending you to guitar lessons. Right. And we're not doing that. No, they helped foster that, grow that. and Not one time did I ever experience any bit of hesitation. They were supportive from day one and, they, cool? and, and, and you know, they just loved it. And, uh, yeah, they were always, always really supportive. You have brothers and sisters. I do. I Are got two, two younger brothers. Are they musical as well? Mm -hmm. No, no, uh -uh. just you. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. think it's so cool. Yeah. That's neat. And you said you're married. Yes. I Where'd am. you meet this young lady? I met, oh gosh, I met her, I think, uh, 2013. Okay. I think we were both, we were both working at Cheddar's. Nice. In Johnson. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were. We were. And um, so, um, you know, when she, I'd be playing shows here and there and she'd come out and see me and then we eventually started dating and then finally it was like, hey brother, are you going to marry me? Time for to... you to put a ring on it, man. So, it. so we had our wedding this past, uh, Past July, we were married July first, two thousand and twenty-three, and Congratulations. She, she, thank you. She just graduated nursing school from ETSU. That's awesome. Thank God. Oh, that yeah. was that was a uh, that was a that was Long an art. Man, she she really did a bang up job. Graduated with honors and was working, and was like working all the way through it, and just graduated with honors and just What's absolutely did a bang up job. Sierra, Sierra, yeah. well, Thank you, Sierra, for all you do. Yes. I mean, like, I think nurses are just amazing Man, and I unsung heroes and they mm -hmm. just, they do all the stuff that nobody else wants to do. And yes, they take, exactly. I mean, like without them, it would just be, it, yeah. It'd be really sad. And really. she comes home and tells me about it. So. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure there are a lot of tough days, I'm yeah, sure. sure. Um, what was your first job? What did you? My, like my very first job ever? Very first job ever. Very first, oh, that was easy. My, that was my dad dragging me out of bed. <laughs> During the summer, I think I think I started doing this summer of my when I was in fifth grade. Okay, and we just like go, we're going to the job site. Go You're going to pick up and sheetrock. That's and, it. Yeah, that's it. And then and so and so that was pretty much my summer job from the time I did that to the time I graduated uh, graduated high school. But one of the things Dad was always like the the whole time I was doing that, he was always like he's like be careful with your hands. Because he didn't want my hands to get messed up, because he knew how how important how that valuable was. they yeah. are. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. that's awesome. Yeah, that's learn really the cool. value of hard work. You know, at I, a young age, I busted my tail quite a bit too. Did you? Younger, yeah, and I think it it pays off, right? I mean, because there are a lot of times later on, you're like, oh man, this is hard, but it's not as hard as what I did before. Right. You know, and then, yeah. Well, the one of the big telltale signs was that whenever school would start, mm -hmm. because we, you know, we'd have to be on the job site at 6.30 in the morning. And a lot of times the job would be 45 minutes or an hour away from our house. So, you're leaving so at we're, we're out of bed at, at 4.30, 4.45 yeah. yeah. in the morning. So whenever school starts and school's right down the road you're like, and we don't you. have to be there till 8.15, we get up there, we're bright eyed and bushy tailed and all of our friends are like, oh my gosh, oh. I had to get out of bed so yeah. early this morning. You're so like, I got to sleep in two hours. Exactly. Ago. And it didn't feel like it at the time, but man, what an advantage. What an advantage mm -hmm. to like really know the value of And of season work. in the morning too. Yes. Like you know, like you get a lot more done in the morning, I think. And so I like getting up early too and, right. and getting it done. I do too. Yeah. I do too. All right. So construction, cheddars, <laughs> and now <laughs> we're we're doing music full time. Is that right? It is. It is. Yeah. It, well, Tell us that, about the process a little bit. Tell us about your your journey into music full time because that's a, probably a hard gig. Well, it, it it is a hard gig, and it hasn't been it, it hasn't been purely um, linear. Right. Um, but really, um, you know, I did the ETSU thing yep. for a while, and I did. Um, and there are only 
Like they're the only place in the world, country that does a bluegrass. They they Is were right? um, they were when I was going through the program. Okay. There may have been some other places that have opened now up since then, like, but so I think there was them, and there was a place out in West Texas that also did that out in Level Land, Texas. But okay. I mean, really, but for sure, ETSU was the first. Jack Toddle started that, and whenever I was a student there. It was just, it, it, it wasn't a major or a minor. It was just a group of electives mm -hmm. that you could take as part of an Appalachian Studies minor. Ah. And then I don't remember when they got the major pass now, but That's now cool. it's like a whole thing. It's a whole yeah, deal. They yeah, so that, so that was really cool. So after I got out of there, um, I had started teaching guitar lessons in Boone's Creek Music Alley. Oh yeah. Yeah, That's yeah, awesome. yeah. So I did, I did that for a long time. And then, um, I, I mean, I've, I taught there for a little bit. I taught at a place called the Trinity Arts Center for yeah. several years. Jamin. Yeah. Uh -huh. somebody. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Jamin. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Jamin. But, uh, I taught there for, for years and then I eventually, um, uh, was hired to come on as an adjunct faculty. At, uh, at ETSU, I think that was back in 2017. Okay. Yeah, and I was teaching a lot more on the country side of the mm -hmm. bluegrass and country music program, but I taught some guitar lessons and directed a couple of the bands. Um, so that was, a, that was a great time and a great experience. And it was really cool to see how far that program had come. Because I mean, I, I, w whenever I was there, you know, we were having to do classes in like the music building and they didn't really like us there. Right. Let's go over the, to the mini dome and exactly. hang out in the basement. Exactly. Yeah. But then like to see, you know, their you know, they like facilities us. and they've got a recording studio and just to see how much that program had grown was really, really cool. And uh, so I did that a couple of years and then uh, I guess it was summer 2022, I started moving all of my stuff online. I started doing online guitar courses and that's become that's become my full-time job now that's cool so, yeah yeah it's been it's it's been an interesting ride tell us about like if you want to if i want to go online and learn how to play the guitar how would i find you to do that so if if you were specifically looking for me i'd go to my website Aaron well, i mean Jackson, everybody's hey. going to be looking for you they don't, there's <laughs> nobody course. else out there that yeah, does that it, online yeah, do they? nobody yeah. i'm the only one right so the niche only of one. <laughs> yeah niche of one man the only place you can go to learn online guitar is that's Aaron Jackson it. Music. that's it that's it but and yeah it's j-a-x-o-n right? yes mm -hmm. yeah i just yeah. want to make sure our listeners get that's to it. you yeah because yeah and then i've, I've got to think it's got to be hard to teach guitar through Zoom or you know however you're doing it online sure. courses and tell us about the courses and how it works and yeah, sure. how you make it easy to learn the guitar. Sure. So so the way that I do that now now I do I do have a niche that I teach. Okay. In. I'm not um, I'm I'm not doing it's not necessarily beginner guitar. So lessons. I'm not a, a candidate. And you're going to be like, <laughs> which way to hold it? I may start doing yeah. that one day just because my day job teaching guitar lessons here locally has yeah. been teaching beginners. Okay. But for the niche there, I'm teaching like bluegrass lead guitar and I'm teaching country gotcha. lead guitar. So there's like a very specific niche there. So people who are, you know, really into that. And what's cool about that style is a lot of people these past couple of years have gotten into that through someone like Billy Strings who okay. has just gotten really, really big and, you know, brought that kind of guitar playing to more people than, you know, I've ever seen in my lifetime. So, um, so I've got the courses on my website and then, uh, I, you know, I promote it through my social media and then I run paid ads on Facebook mm -hmm. for it. And, um, you know, I do content on YouTube. I do instructional content on YouTube and, um, you know, through, so, so, so that's kind of how, that's kind of how the whole thing works. That's cool. Yeah. 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 It's a lot to just manage that side of it too, oh, right? Yes. And then you're like, and I got to put out content and I got to get, make yes. sure it goes to the right places right. and the right platforms and how's it look? And I got yes. lighting and cameras and sound. Mm -hmm. and, and then you also are doing gigs too, probably, right? I haven't, I haven't really done a lot of live music since COVID. Okay. I'll probably get, try to start getting out and doing that um, again this year. But it's just honestly, from the time I moved up here in 2002 till 2020, I mean, I was just doing that constantly you know with different bands with bluegrass bands with rock and roll bands that's fun top 40 cover who are bands. some of the bigger bands and people you've played with over the years well man i've played with a lot i'd probably have to really kind of scratch my brain <laughs> to like really go through right. like all of them there are some but, of the ones that are memorable well for you whenever i first came up here um after my first year being at etsu i got put into um what they call the bluegrass pride band and it's it's just it's the 
the ETSU bluegrass band that does the majority of the performing. If you book the ETSU bluegrass band, you got it, us. Yeah. So we started performing around here um, in Bristol. Uh, we did rhythm and roots. We, did, I mean, we just performed all over the That's place, fun. and so that was a lot of fun. Um, and then let's see here. There was another. There was another band that was they were more like a, like a country slash southern rock cover band called twang bangers oh yeah that i played in off and on That's from about fun. 2008 to 2012 so that was a that was a rowdy good time that was a that, that was a lot of fun and then i had a, a, another band that i played in called a great disaster with my buddy <laughs> zach ross and um, um, my friends, uh, Jason Carpenter and Nick Castro. So we, and that, that was a little bit more kind of like indie folk meets like the Grateful Dead. Like That's the, cool. like the Avett yeah. Brothers and Wilco meets the Grateful Dead. And, when, and that was a good time. And just everybody in there was really cool. We had a lot, had a lot of fun playing in that band. Uh, another group called the J. Marie Project with my friend Rob Love and his wife Jasmine. And we would usually play at Wild Wing. And we were doing top 40, like, pop and R&B. Oh, covers. that's We were fun. doing, like, Bruno Mars, Beyonce, all that kind oh, of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you can do yeah. it all. Well, I... <laughs> yeah, he's, he's like, I don't want to say I can, I, but yeah, I, I can do I, it. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy playing different styles. And then I'd played a lot of bluegrass with my friends, JP and Leona Mathis. If you've ever seen the Netflix show Swap Shop. They're, I have uh, but yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah, yeah, they're they're uh, they're in that a lot, and I've played a lot of bluegrass with them too. And uh, just for years, it wasn't. Yeah, I, I would find myself in the span of one weekend playing like bluegrass at the Down Home, maybe playing you know top forty covers at Wild, Wild Wing, Wing, playing rock and roll at Capone's. Yeah, you know, and then Sunday morning doing like Hillsong and Elevation worship out at uh, Highlands Fellowship. Oh, how cool yeah. is that? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I love it. Oh yeah, I love it. Yeah, I think that's um, just super cool. It was now, fun. what's your favorite genre then? I mean, are you like leaning towards bluegrass still, or are you like kind of? Well, I um, I I really do enjoy playing different styles. I really do. I like the subtleties and the intricacies of uh -huh. different of different styles of music. Um, but these days I'm finding myself doing a lot more bluegrass just because I've, I, I didn't expect this. I wasn't looking for this, but I found that there's a niche, um, where there was a, there was a demand for, um, for like the lessons that I offered. So, so that's, that's, that's kind of what I'm doing a lot of these days. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, do you see yourself getting back into the band gig? I mean, like you're, you're, you're hiding your talent under a bushel, it sounds like. A little bit. You're not sharing it with the world, except on YouTube, right? Well, on online. On YouTube, you're doing yeah, it? Okay. Yeah, 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 online. The thing about it is, though, and we sometimes joke about this, but it's, there's, you can get so many more eyeballs, eyeballs on what right. you do. Right, you can go to online. Wild Wing and right. like exactly. 200 people see you. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. maybe. And then you go on right. YouTube and maybe 200,000 people. Exactly. See you, which is super exactly. cool. I love the idea of the platform there. Yeah. Um, yeah, you just hope that it doesn't all go that direction. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Carly and I were headed to um, Greenville, South Carolina tomorrow to watch Stevie Nicks. Oh, nice. She was like, "I'm. I want to go to see Stevie Nicks." And so oh, I was like, "Man, well, if you want to go, well, I'm going to go with you." Nice. And so we're excited. That's about great. That. Yeah, it'll be fun. That's great. It'll be fun. Yeah. Um, so, how do you see your music business shifting and changing in the future? Like, I mean, how do you want to see? Your your brand grow sure. So I um what and I've already got several videos in the queue here, mm -hmm. but I, I I've really started to enjoy putting out instructional videos um, for free on YouTube. That's awesome. And and after going through and having to develop courses, sure. What's good about that? I mean, it's it's good on a business side because it's infinitely scalable, right? Because there's no you know there's really no inventory there, right? Um. But what's cool about that is you learn how to map out a curriculum. Yep. And when you're doing that in combination with doing, you know, one-on-one -on -one lessons with people over Zoom, you see what people are having trouble with, mm -hmm. you see what they need help with. Mm -hmm. And so doing both of those things gives you a really good idea of what would be helpful to people. So the masses, so put, right. Putting right. that stuff out on YouTube has been, I didn't expect, and I didn't think that I would enjoy doing that, but I've really come to enjoy doing that. So I think this next year, I'm really going to really gonna kind of double down on that. On the videos mm -hmm. and try and mm -hmm. help out people with that, the few things they're struggling with. Sure. Is, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is 
uh, Sierra, what does she think about all the YouTube stuff that you're doing? <laughs> she thinks it's cool. She does. Um, it's, it's, it's funny now because I'm completely um, self-employed. Yeah. And I can really just kind of work from home. But she, a lot of times, she has to come in and knock on the door and be like, hey, work day's over, dude. Because you just love it. I do, I do, but I'm also, I mean, I come from a, I come from a long line of workaholics. Right, yeah, I just you got do, up at and, five to do it every day and, 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 and work till five and or and six. And I inherited that gene for sure, so a lot of times she just has to be like, hey, come on, stop, yeah. stop. So that's that's great, I'm glad that I've got her there, but no, she's she's great and, and you know, super supportive. Yeah. But she, she kind of echoed what you were saying a minute ago, though. She was like, you need to get out and play, and a lot of times she's like, why don't you come play for me, dude? I was like, <laughs> I'm with you, sir. Why don't you get out there and play a little I bit? I know. All he, right. he showed me a video where he was playing right where we're sitting, and it was yeah. fantastic. And Thank so you. we should have gotten, Mitch said, you should have brought your guitar, and we should have gotten to play a little bit. That would have been awesome. We'll do it again. Who are some of the most influential people besides your dad that you've, um, you'd want to give a shout out to that have helped you along the way? Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, there's, there's so many, but, um, He's he he passed away in 2021, but my Sorry. first my first guitar teacher. Oh man! In in East Texas, uh, John DeFore, mm. and uh, John um, man he was great. He was great. He was re he was really unique. He taught in this old hotel called the Beckham Hotel. He he actually owned it, but had his own little apartment down, um, and in the lobby of it. And uh, that 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 was great and really formative and that was a really good time and I, I didn't know this about him at the time but I later learned a little bit more about him and uh, he was born and raised in Texas but he joined joined the military and he was stationed in London in the 60s and first started teaching guitar in London in the 60s. Oh wow that's crazy. It was nuts so he was great and then um, gosh I um and then when I moved up here, I, I took lessons for several years from a, from a fellow named Dave Yates. And he was great. He was great. He really showed me a couple of really foundational things that I was lacking in my musicianship mm -hmm. uh, that, that have really, um, that really helped me out in a, in a lot of different ways. So big, big shout out to Dave. And um, it's, it's funny, there's, there's, so many, but when I'm trying to think of it, I'm almost kind of like drawing a blank. No, but you're I mean, good. But I mean, definitely with John, with my first yeah. guitar teacher, that was a big one. Isn't that cool how you remember like your first teacher, it like is. that taught you something? I yes. mean, I still remember, I played a lot of tennis growing up. Pete yeah. Sanis was a, a just an influential person in my life that yeah. helped me learn how to play tennis with, right. you know, and it's those guys that are, you're, I think, giving them away, you know, and you've taught hundreds of kids probably locally and I people and, and they're going to go, yeah. I remember Aaron, he helped us out. You know, I hope like, so. <laughs> yeah, right? I mean, yeah, I think it's I really, so. I think that's what we're called to do. Um, right. Yeah, I think the Lord wants us to give our lives away in some in some way. For sure. What are some of the, since we went from the highs a little bit, what are some of the most difficult things you've had to deal with in your music career and life to, you know, because there are a lot of times where it doesn't go, it's not all sunshine mm. and roses. Mm. So what are no, some of the tougher um, things you've had to deal with? So, and, and this is just, this is just part of my story here, but it is, um, but I, I'll, I'll, I'll share it here. I'm, I'm someone who's in recovery. And um, this, uh, this coming May, I'll celebrate six years clean and sober. Good for you. And um, so I had, you That's know. That's awesome. It, it's, it's one of those things, you know, you know, playing live music constantly. You're, you're around You're surrounded it. a lot and, of stuff. And I yeah. also, unfortunately, I, I had figured out when I was young and I'd get really, really nervous before mm -hmm. I'd play, I unfortunately learned that, you know, alcohol's a bit of a sedative and can help do that. But unfortunately, that thing's got a scorpion's tail and it comes back and bites you. Yeah. Um, but uh, I remember s several years ago, I had, just, I had finally got to a place where I was able to call somebody and ask for help. Yeah. And I went to treatment here uh, in, in Johnson City. And, and um, you know, after getting sober, one of my favorite things that I do now with music, I guess I was a little, not, not, not dishonest, but I left this out because I actually do live music. We do it twice per month, but we go back to the place that um, I went to treatment at, Aww, me and a couple of friends. That's awesome. And we take our guitars and we lead a group there. And, and you know, we, we play music for them and we have a good time. 
But then we also just kind of let them know. It's like, hey, we were where you were, y'all are, yeah. and I promise you, this stuff works if you work it. Yeah. So, so that was kind of a low, but it's turned into something that's really, really fulfilling. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think the Lord's probably working through you in a major way there. I hope so. Yeah. I've learned the best thing I can do is get out of the way and let Him take over. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think we try and do it on our own sometimes, but I mean, let the Holy Spirit just work through you. That is beautiful. The, music comes out of you. Good advice it. comes out of you. Mm-hmm. You just want to get out of the way, like you said, just get out of the way. And that's the best way. Um, what would you like? Somebody's listening, maybe, and they're thinking, "Hey, I, I like playing music. I like teaching. How, what would be some advice you'd give to somebody who's thinking about teaching um, and musical instrument or getting started in on the YouTube?" Sure. So, the the most important thing with teaching is empathy. The most important thing is learning how to meet your students where they're at. Right. This is a lesson. I remember the first time I went in, in, at Music Alley back in 2006, and I sat down and I actually taught some lessons. I remember I called my girlfriend at the end of the night, and it wasn't a very macho thing to do, but I was almost in tears. I was, like, I was like, I can't do this. I was like, oh, my gosh. Because, and the reason is is because I, that was the day that I learned that what is easy for me is not easy for them. Right. And so that's the most important thing as a teacher. And again, whether you're doing that in person, whether you're doing that online, but is doing your best to try and meet your students, your viewers, whatever it is, to try to meet them where they're at and help them solve a problem or get to where they're wanting to be. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just empathy. Oh, and also tons and tons of patience. <laughs> Lots of patience. Lots of patience. As much patience as you can muster. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's a good one for sure. Um, so anything new and spectacular you're working on that's exciting that you're like, just let's go. Like what's getting you jazzed up right now? So um, besides your wife graduating, which is awesome. That, that, that really was cool, man. And she just knocked it out of the park too. Um, so, Honestly, is um, is doing the stuff on YouTube. I recently, um, I, I'm, 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 I'm just having to learn how to make videos and how to make content and doing, you know, a lot of what Mitch and Marissa yes, do. Yeah, they're over here wearing you know, it up. Which yeah. is, you know, how to take two different camera angles and how to splice it up and sync it up with audio and do video production and all that kind of stuff. So I'm kind of having to learn how to do that on my own, but I'm making some progress there. And uh, I'm just looking forward to this next year, just really releasing a lot of material that I hope, you know, really helps people. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Now, are you monetized on YouTube yet? Or are you like figuring out how, how do you make a living off of YouTube? I, I'm not sure if I'm at, if I'm eligible for monetization right now or not. No, but really the way that I do that is with my videos, with all of my videos, I put links to okay like my lead magnets where people can sign up for free lessons. And then, you know, that gets them into my, you know, on my email list. And also I just, under all of my videos, I just put a link to all of my online guitar courses and they can go and check those out. And um, it's it's not completely passive income, but it's also not me having to, you know, trade my time for it. Right, that's true too. Are you on a Patreon as well and doing that? No, I haven't launched a Patreon as of right now. I've just got, uh, I've got the courses um, that people can, you know, pick up for just a one-time payment. And uh, I may launch like a membership style thing. But um, that's that's how I'm doing it right now. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. cool. I think there's a million ways to skin the cat and oh, money yeah. on YouTube. And yeah. It's fun to hear different people and how they're doing it oh, yeah. and, and how they're monetizing and yeah. and getting it going. And, I mean, we had Johnny Bragg and another buddy, Jared Yanis, on here the other day. And uh-huh. they've got lots of followers and they're selling merch and coffee yeah. and all kinds of stuff. I mean, it's just super cool. That's great. It's super cool. Yeah. What's something um, that I should have asked you that I haven't yet? Any questions oh that you're like, gosh. man, I wish you would have brought this up. Oh my gosh. I, um, I, I guess maybe one of the things, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you, you've been around here for a long time mm-hmm. too, but just how, how Johnson city has changed mm-hmm. since I've been here. Yeah. That's growing. It really is. It we got really people is. moving here from all over the place. All over the place. And, and I don't know, have they, have they done like an, an official census Six. No, I okay. don't think so. I, yeah, I, I don't know if we're counting how many immigrants we have moving yeah. into the area, but we got a lot of them coming yes. from California. Uh-huh. Um, a lot of northern blue states people yes. moving down here. They love Jesus. Uh-huh. You know, <laughs> they they love like being able to carry a weapon yes. here in East, East Tennessee. You uh-huh. don't have to have a permit. Right. Um, 
So yeah, I, I don't know a number, but it's you know it's definitely in the, in yeah. the tens of thousands. It would have to be. Yeah, it would have to and, be. Um, and I'm with you. Like our culture is awesome here, right? And yes. so I'm fearful a little bit that that gets changed. Hopefully, it's changed in a good way. You know, with all sure. these folks. But hopefully, you know, we we blend well. We we affect them a little bit, and they mm-hmm. you know they bring their good stuff to us, and um, we just there's a good synergy there is what I'm hoping for. And I think that's going to be the case because more often than or in in my opinion, I think the people with the proactivity and the wherewithal. Yeah to you know move to a certain place because mm-hmm. that's where they want to be you know typically i think those you know those those values are going to be are going to be synergistic yeah yeah all right let's do the speed round okay where are you guys going for hamburger five guys pizza cootie browns coffee There's a place in Gray. I forget. I, I don't remember. Stillwaters. Yeah, yeah, I was there today. Okay. It yeah. was, I love Stillwaters. Mm-hmm. Um, how about you go out for ice cream, dessert? I'm hitting all the foods because that's what I. I think. Freddy's. 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 Yes. Get yeah. a concrete. Yeah. Uh-huh. My niece worked there last summer. They're delicious. Yeah. I, I keep forgetting about that. That's a great. Yeah, one. they're Thank great you for that. Uh-huh. Yeah. There's a little <laughs> ice cream shop in Gray too, right? Kind of near Stillwaters, yes. uh-huh. and it's a it's a good spot. Um, what's your favorite restaurant in town? I have two, uh, El Charlet and Project Barbecue. Oh. Not two. N- th- th- there's a lot of great places around well, those here. Are, I mean, you can like say those are, yeah. I mean, those are awesome. But those are my those are my two favorite. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the boys from Project Barbecue were on here probably a year ago, maybe. They're, yeah. I, and they're growing. They're up in a new location. And it's. Right. They put out something awesome. Every single time I'm there, it's just, it it's fantastic and i never ever ever feel bloated or I, like i never and, and usually when i'm eating barbecue right like I, i'm just like i'm, I'm, myself, I'm like, not I'm going to feel great after this but like when i'm <laughs> when i leave project barbecue i'm like let's go to jujitsu class let's nice. go to yoga you know <laughs> I, that place is great it I is it. so good mm-hmm. oh man yeah yeah it's so good um let's see what else can i hit you up with um, you did burger, pizza, coffee. I don't know. I think that's about it. Where, okay. where, oh, let's talk about music venues locally. Yeah. What do you like? What are some, some what are some of the popular music venue spots? So like, like I said, it's, it's, I've been a little out of the live music right. loop, but man, for years and especially for acoustic, for bluegrass, man, the, the down home is legendary. It's it world crazy? famous. It is it's world legendary. famous. And it's, it's right here yes. in little old Johnson City. It is. And I just love it. It's intimate. But, but another thing that I like about it is they, they're very clear that this is a listening room. And if somebody decides to be disruptive, they will not hesitate to, to show them the door. So that's great. Um, for, for, for that kind of music, but man, I have, and I've played for years at, at Capone's. Oh yeah. Man, it's just like for rock and roll. It's a good spot. It's perfect. It's, you know, it's, it's that great size to where it's, um, it's, it's small enough, but it can get really loud mm-hmm. in there and it sounds awesome. Yeah. So I like the, I like both of those. And then Wild Wing, you've been there. I have. Yeah. Wild, Wild Wing is great for, um, like I said, it, when you're doing cover bands and stuff like that, that's a really good time. Have you seen anything in the Martin Center yet? Over by ETSU? I've only been in there one time, almost, um, because Ricky Skaggs Mm -hmm. did, I think, did like a Christmas thing, and we almost went, but I wasn't able to at the last It is an amazing venue right here. I mean, we've got Broadway shows coming. We've got Mm. big-time talented people. Yeah. Um, Yeah, my friend Josh Gibbons the other day mentioned somebody that was there, and he was like, I mean, it was like he's leaving Johnson City. Then I think it was like Charlotte, New York, yeah. L.A., Atlanta. I mean, like big time. He was like, right. I don't even know how Johnson City made it on the list, but we were, awesome. we were blessed to have it. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you still doing anything at ETSU? No. Um, 2021. That was my that, that was my last year doing that. I had a great time while I was there, but I was just having to put all the focus into the online stuff because yeah. it it takes a lot. That's awesome. Okay. Last question. Uh, well. Two more. How can our listeners connect with you? Like, sure. tell tell them how to get in touch with you if they want to look at your videos, reach out to you on social media, because sure. we want to pump you up and help however we can. I appreciate that. So, Instagram at a a j a x o n because my Aaron Jackson was taken. So, <laughs> dang you, Aaron that, Jackson, that, that, the that first was, one. That, that was as close as I could get. But yeah, at a a j a x o n. 
on Instagram. I do a lot of stuff on Instagram on YouTube at Aaron Jackson Guitar. Okay, I'm doing a lot of stuff there. Yeah. Um, as far as the social media, those are the two big ones for me. Okay. I've, I've got a TikTok and a Facebook too, but it really Instagram and, and YouTube. And then check out my website, AaronJackson.com. It's got my online guitar courses, and you can email me through that. And uh, that's that's where I'm at. I love it. That's I love it. What gets you fired up? Like you're just like, whoa, let's go. A lot of things. I, I'll be honest with you, Colin. Kind of what I was telling you about a minute ago. You know, being being sober, um, because I know what it's like to have your life really be a train wreck, and to really be disappointed in how things are, and to go through that, to come out on the other side, and to be able to share that mm. with people who are in the thick of it. It, it doesn't get much better than that. It was kind of like, you know, it was kind of like you were saying, you know, I think, you know, God uses us to help other people. And, you know, being able to do that, being able to use music to give back to my yeah. recovery community like that, I tell you, man, that's just, I love it. That's awesome. I love that's it. That's special yeah. that you're doing that too. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I, I thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank I'm, you for having me. I'm praying that all the people who, uh, who are listening get to go. I'm going to go online right after I get off here and listen to your music. I've got to drive to a house and I'm going to be like, I'm going to be playing some Aaron Jackson on the phone. All right. Well, I appreciate like, it. Yeah. Cause I think, um, yeah, from what you showed me, you're a fantastic musician. Oh, the so Lord much. blessed you. I and, really appreciate um, it. Thanks for using your talent there, not only to teach people how to, to be better musicians, but to also, you know, love on people and get them through tough stuff. That's so good, hope is, um, I think, yeah, you're right. It gets you fired up. It really does. So, well, thank you for sharing. Thanks for coming on. Until next time, I'm Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. You want to buy a house, Aaron? I'll, I'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to buy a house like Aaron in the future, uh, we would love to help you. If you want to build wealth and buy like a rental property, we can manage it all. We just we can help you there too. If you're wanting to sell your property, we'd love to help you with that too. So just reach out. We, I'm here to help. And um, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening.